So Elon Musk buys 9.2% of Twitter company. Pretty crazy story. Uh, this is one of the biggest social media headlines this week. There's a lot going on on social. We're going to start with this story. But my name is Kip Russell. I am the social media lead at uh, Spin Attack, an advertising agency that helps some of the world's biggest brands. I'm also an influencer myself with nearly a million social media followers. I live and breathe this stuff. I've been doing it since the MySpace days before there was Facebook ads. So this is what I'm paying attention to for all the clients that I consult with uh, and for myself and things that are going to move the needle within my social strategies but also what's going on, what's changing within the social media landscape. So first story here is Elon Musk buys uh, you know, 9.2% of Twitter. No one knows really the reason behind this. Is, is it just a power move, is he a stock dump? But he has been the most vocal about Twitter maybe than all social networks in his interviews and all that other good things. I'm excited just to see what it does uh, if he pushes the needle here. Twitter's a, uh, an amazing channel. I spend a lot of time on it only because I think it's really the water cooler of the world. So if you're trying to figure out what's happening in any cultural event, any news story, uh, dive in deeper, find unique points of view, Twitter is gonna be that place. Again, it can be like any social network, a dumpster fire of craziness, trolls, and hate, but it's uh, it's an amazing platform. And really, I think out of many of the social networks has carved out its place in the universe of the social world. And I think, if anything, um, maybe this is him hedging his bet so they can't take him off the platform because he now has a little bit of a, uh, stake in the company. We'll see how this evolves, but I think it's a crazy story. I'm excited about because I really enjoy Elon as an entrepreneur. I want to see what he continues to do uh, and see if maybe he helps uh, get involved in the business. Twitter's at a unique point where I think it could explode a little bit in terms of growth if it does a few things right, so I want to see where this goes. Second biggest story I want to talk about that I think will really impact our, our uh, the whole uh, social media landscape is Instagram is testing a new full screen main feed of feed posts. So this doesn't mean everything's going vertical. They're just making each post in the feed uh, basically fill up the phone. And then when you swipe, just like TikTok, it moves quickly to the next thing. I think I've been saying this in the beginning of this video series that TikTok isn't just winning because of the content and the creators there. It's winning because of the speed of the news feed. One swipe, you're onto the next great uh, uh, new piece of content. And it really allows you to stay in the rabbit hole and increases watch time. And I think when you went back to Instagram, back to Facebook, the news feed feed feels like a dated experience. And I think for the younger generation and the generation now that's just immersed in social, speed is the winning game. That's why stories were so successful. Lots of people put out content that we're never gonna be interested in. So the faster we can get away from it, the better and move on to something that we're interested in. So again, everything's moving to that TikTok type of gateway drug type content, Netflix, uh, Spotify is doing a similar version. We already have YouTube shorts, idea pins, uh, obviously reels. So that leads me to my third uh, story that I wanna share with you guys, and it's really the success of Facebook Reels. We know that Instagram has Reels, Facebook has now launched uh, Reels out to, um, you know, into Facebook newsfeed. If you're not posting uh, your TikToks or your, you know, your vertical content to Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels, uh, idea pins and shorts, you're, you're losing. These are now the things triggered in the algorithm as they get these, they want these placements to be quality placements, lots of eyeballs to run ads against. Reels on Facebook, I've been seeing crazy numbers. Just like Instagram, you can get one to go wildly, uh, you know, like TikTok, wildly viral. So I think Facebook, while typically the clone of the industry, right, lately, that's how they product their product has been evolving. Reels is really winning. It's capturing some attention. They're paying creators well enough so that uh, people are now more incentivized to stay in the channel. So double down. If you're making content for TikTok or you're a creator or a business that's doing really well on TikTok, put those uh, reels, in, uh, TikTok, excuse me, into Facebook Reels and Instagram Reels. This is really the holy grail right now. So double down your strategies. Start just going four by five or vertical for with any piece of content. I will, I will think that, um, I hope Instagram rolls out the um, full screen experience because I think it's going to be important to success and I think speed is the game. And I think no matter what uh, platform you're on, you're gonna have, the news feed's going to have to evolve with the changing attention span. The next thing that I think is important, I think it's a bigger part of your strategy, is TikTok is testing watch history to help you track down a clip that you really want, wanted to show your friends that you forgot about. I say this to all my clients. 85%, maybe 90% of consumers are what we call lurkers on social media. They barely post, they rarely even engage with content. They more just passively view and scroll all day. 
and watch time is a big reason TikTok has been so successful. They see, you know, are you watching 100% of the video or, you know, 80% of the video? Are you watching the video two or three times because it's super funny and it's interesting to you? Then they'll show it to more people. Uh, that's what's leading to the virality on the channel and that's what's leading to the same on uh, Reels. So watch time is super important. In fact, it's your most important thing in terms of your remarketing strategies. No longer are the days where you're going to your website and just remarketing the traffic from your website. You need to be creating these in-app data points. So the more you feed the content with Reels and TikToks and get people to watch it, people will forget that they watch your content. They go, oh, I wanted to share that video. Oh, I remember that ad. Oh, I remember that piece of content from that brand. They forget, right? They don't like, they don't comment. So they have no way to find that, that video that they saw. So Sharing videos and then being able to remarket them is super important in your strategies, but now consumers can go back and find that video too, maybe watch it two, three, four other times and also share it with the friends and family. To me, this is gonna be huge. I think it exposes more who we are as consumers and I think it's gonna be obviously great for their data bandwidth, but I think super important moving forward. And I, I could see this making a lot of sense on any social network. That history to find stuff I think is important. It's like a text chain. Sometimes you wanna go back and f find that funny photo and reuse it again. Content will have more vir virality this way and better for marketers so we can continue to remarket off that content. The last thing I wanna talk about is creators. So LinkedIn's adding new tools for creators including improved content analytics and update updates to profile video options. If you guys haven't understood the landscape here, all the social networks are now doing what I think they should have done, like YouTube since day one, is incentivize uh, individual creators and brands to consistently put out better and better content and then get paid a percentage of that ad revenue back to the creator. So LinkedIn's doing that now too. They're starting to do all the right things with their dashboard so that people can analyze the content that's working and do more of the good stuff, which ultimately ends up for healthier social networks because the experience is better for the consumer. So if LinkedIn's doubling down, everyone's doubling down on creators, it's a great time to one, get yourself into the mix, but two, to understand that you need to be thinking about as a brand, any, any small business, any restaurant, you know, how can I get evergreen influencers to work with me? Long, I think, are gone are the days of ad agencies make, making all the creative for you that they need to also help you partner with evergreen creators because Influencers are a mix of your production budget and your media budget, right? They're making content that you can syndicate in your channels or ads, but they're also super valuable to getting the word out and, and building that authentic credibility and building and help you grow followers. So we need to be thinking about influencers as evergreen, always on plays, and they're part of your production budget as well as media, so finding a way to fund it. You need that content to break through. You need that additional amplified reach and word of mouth. So how can you build that in, whether it's affiliate links, you know, trackable UTMs, you know, find out a way to keep uh, influencers evergreen. Ultimately, it's saving you money because you don't have to do your photo shoots and all sorts of things that can be really hard to scale for lots of businesses. So think of influencers differently, think of creators differently. And now that these creators are getting incentivized in multiple ways, you're gonna have lots of creators being able to afford to make content for you on a full-time basis. And the game has changed. Once again, uh, I think that's all the news I'm really paying attention to this week. If you have anything or wanna share, put it in the link below. Appreciate your time and uh, have a conversation and let's see where Elon goes with this Twitter purchase. Later.